Is Tesla lying to you when it comes to the range of their EVs, or can you rest assured that you're getting the entire range as stated on their website? That's what we're gonna be finding out in today's video. The thing is, one of the main fears that people have before buying an electric vehicle, Tesla or other manufacturer, is that range anxiety and the ability potentially to get stranded on the side of the road if running out of charge. And honestly, these are valid concerns as depending on where you live, there may or may not be any charging stations available, let alone Tesla's superchargers. And even if there are, the reality is that it does take quite a bit longer to charge up your EV than it does to fill up a tank of gas. Now, I've had a 2021 Tesla Tesla Model 3 for almost four years now. And I've recently just purchased this here 2024 Model 3 Highland, as they call it. And although I can confidently say that charging really hasn't been a concern 99% of the time when just driving in and around my city, things do get a tad more involved when planning for a road trip, especially if the range of your vehicle isn't quite what was advertised on the manufacturer's website. And I say this because between my two Model 3s, I can confidently say that the 2021 Model 3 does not have nearly the claimed range of 420 kilometers on a single charge, even in the summer and even the first year I got it. And in the winter, when temperatures drop below freezing, the range is probably around half that at roughly 200 kilometers, which is pretty terrible and downright unacceptable and false advertising in my opinion. And so in today's video, I'm going to put Elon and his engineers to the test by driving my 2024 Model 3 all the way to my buddy's cottage and back, which from my point of departure is roughly 180 kilometers or 360 kilometers round trip, meaning technically I should be able to make it there and back on one single charge since this Model 3 has a claimed range of 438 kilometers. So I should have 80 kilometers of range left after a round trip, but if it's anything like the 2021 Tesla, that certainly will not be the case. A couple of things to mention right out of the gate here. I'm going to be keeping hubcaps on the rims of the vehicle for the road trip though, because according to the internet, hubcaps on the Model 3 or any other Tesla, I suppose, add roughly 10 miles of range, which is around 16 kilometers. So although not that much, uh, you know, on 430 kilometers, it still makes a tiny little difference. So we're going to be keeping them on. And by the way, these are aftermarket hubcaps that are a bit larger. In my opinion, they look a lot better than the free aero hubcaps that come on the rim stock. Uh, and you can check these out uh, using the link down below in this video's description. And what makes these great as well is that they actually go above the rims like lip or edge. So uh, they're going to protect your car from any type of curb rash. Additionally, I'm going to be charging the car up to 100% rather than the recommended 80% for daily driving, which does uh, improve the battery's longevity. But for this road trip, I'm going to be bringing it up to 100%. Uh, a, because, well, I want as much juice as possible in the batteries for this road trip, but B, and more importantly for this test, it's going to just make it a lot easier to, you know, estimate how much charge was actually used relative to the kilometers that we drove on this test. All right, so it is the next day here, and as you can see right here, overnight, I've charged the car up to 100%, which if we click on this, well, we can see here 436 kilometers. So we're starting with 436 kilometers on this journey and like i said it is around 360 kilometers round trip so let's depart and i'll give you an update midway through and once we basically get there to see how many kilometers we've used i'm on the highway now and i wanted to give you a couple little updates and additional information so number one um, i'm going to be cruising at around 110 kilometers per hour the entire way there which pretty sure is around 65 to 70 miles per hour if you're in the us uh, so keep that in mind i'm going to be keeping it pretty steady and on autopilot for that entire time. So no crazy accelerations or anything. Number two, speaking of accelerations, I'm going to be on the chill mode for acceleration the whole time instead of standard uh, to try and save a little bit of juice as well throughout this trip.
All right, so I made it to destination here and there was actually a bit of a detour because on the highway right before arriving at the cottage, there was a, an accident. So they closed the whole highway down and I had to go all the way around. And anyways, I'm gonna take that into account, um, those extra kilometers in the calculation at the end. But as you can see here, we're at, oh, it was at 52, it just went down to 51 and it says 224 kilometers. So I'm gonna plug it in uh, into a 120 volt um, charger because I brought the, uh, the temporary mobile charger. Don't think I'm going to actually stop at a supercharger after all, and I'll just head on back home. So we'll be able to see exactly how much juice was used up on this trip. Hey, what's going on everyone? So it's about two days later now, I'm leaving the cottage and um, I did end up plugging in the vehicle with the portable charger essentially. Not because I was really worried that there wouldn't be enough charge, but you know, just why not since we're at the cottage and it was right beside uh, a power outlet. So plug that in overnight and now I have 309 kilometers or 71% as we can see there. So I don't exactly remember how much the charge was at when um, I left we'll be able to see uh, in the clip that I took the other day uh, but so it gave I think about 15 ish percent over overnight essentially the last night um, so now I'm driving back home and we will see you know how many kilometers it uses once again pretty sure we're gonna be well within our limits though and there's not gonna be any issues coming back all right so honestly as of right now I'm pretty impressed I'm about 30 minutes in and as you can see here it says that essentially Tesla's give you an estimate of you know what the battery the charge will be like when you get to destination based on your driving habits and I've been doing highway right now and it's gone up by from around 20 to now 28 percent so we'll see if that's accurate by the time I actually get home but for now I'm relatively impressed this car uh, has a much better range than the old one and to the point where it's even uh, really reconfirming in my mind that the last car absolutely had some type of issue with the battery and its capacity and range. So even though I had sent a message to Tesla, they say they had done um, an over the air sort of like diagnostic. They're able to see whether or not the battery has issues. Kind of like when you bring your iPhone into the Apple store, they can tell you the max capacity of the battery. They had said that it was totally fine and that was four years ago. But you know, this test today is really Really reconfirming with me that my old Model 3 uh, absolutely had a problem. So this one is pretty decent, the uh, Model 3 Highland, and uh, at this point I'll just give you an update once I get to destination. All right, see you then. So I just made it home here, and as you can see, we are at 24% charge. So we're gonna hop into my office and take a look at the math here to see whether or not the actual real range of the Tesla Model 3 is the same as what is stated on Tesla's website. Let's go take a look. All right, so as mentioned a couple of times in today's video, the Model 3 standard range, which is the one that I have, has a claimed range of 438 kilometers as stated on Tesla's website. And in my experience, in the past at least, claimed range hasn't been very accurate at all. That being said, for this trip, I had charged the car up to 100% or 436 kilometers, as it said in the car's dashboard. And taking into account the little detour that I took at the end of the trip due to an accident on the highway, the total kilometers driven was 197 kilometers. And upon arrival to destination, it said that it still had 51% or 224 kilometers of range. So considering that I did a 197 kilometers of driving on the highway mostly, adding that to 224 kilometers that it said I had left in the battery would mean a total of 421 kilometers. However, we used 49% of the battery's charge over 197 kilometers. So considering that's basically half the battery's capacity, total range would be closer to around 400 kilometers on this trip had I tried to simply come back home without giving it any additional charge. And to confirm this, well, when I left the cottage two days later, I had 71% charge. And upon arriving home, I was at 24%, meaning I used up 47% of the battery, which makes total sense since I didn't have that little detour like on the way there. Now, 
here are a couple of things to consider in this test that make a whole lot of difference in regards to your car's range. Number one, the weather and conditions were identical on my way there and on my way back. And this is important because windier and colder conditions can really eat up the battery's charge. Number two, most of this trip was highway driving. And I can absolutely confirm to you after four years of owning an electric vehicle that the battery depletes much, much faster when driving in the city than on the highway because you're constantly accelerating and braking rather than maintaining a certain speed. So this car wouldn't get even close to 438 kilometers if driving exclusively in the city. And finally, this test was conducted in the summer, which makes a world of difference when it comes to total range as the cold weather eats at the battery's capacity quite substantially. So had I done this trip during the winter, I most likely would have wanted to plug in the car for the whole three days on the mobile 120 volt charger to get as much juice as possible, or even stop at a Tesla supercharger. There was one sort of a little 10 minute detour away. And by the way, uh, would you be interested in seeing this same test during the winter, make sure to let me know down below in the comments. So overall though, the question that we wanted answered in this video was, is Tesla lying to you in regards to range? And the answer is, kind of. Ultimately, the total range of the vehicle really depends on the weather, your driving style, and a whole bunch of other factors. And so although it could be possible um, to get that claimed range for these vehicles under perfect and optimal conditions, it is very difficult to accomplish. And you can usually account for at least a 10% range difference or variance in my experience than what's advertised. Now, I'm planning on doing a road trip to Florida in this car in a couple of months. So if you want to see how the car fares during a much, much longer road trip, make sure to subscribe to the channel right now so that you're updated with my future videos. And by the way, if you're interested in any accessories for your Tesla vehicle, I've made a couple of videos on the channel that you can check out right here, as well as checking out the products directly on Amazon using my storefront link down below in the video's description. It really helps support the channel. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.